All right, let's hop into the second installment of After the Altar with Love is Blind season three. In the last episode, we basically were just brought up to speed with the couples and now they're about to be preparing for, I think, a party that Alexa and Brenna are throwing for Alexa's birthday. And so let's see how everyone interacts, especially Zay said this was going to be the first time that she and Cole had seen each other since the wedding. So we'll see how that goes over. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates Anyabwile, Steph Anya for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. We're gonna be watching part two of After the Altar, Love is Blind season three. Let's hop right in. One thing about Raven, she's always going to make sure she's doing Pilates. I don't care what episode it is. Are you feeling like, you know, he's someone that you can see, like, you have a family with and, like, you know, really have, like, an invested future with? Mm. Does he want to have kids? Yeah. Oh, okay. girl, he wants to have, like, three or four. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm wondering this friend, you know, I feel like she's being very non-judgmental in her questions. She's just asking where Raven's at. But I'm wondering, does she have any idea about what was happening with him? Because sometimes I feel like the friends, family members can see things that the person in the relationship can't see. So I'm curious if she was asking these questions because she was having doubts or if she was just genuinely curious. One of my friends, Alexa, is having her birthday party coming up and is gonna be there. After the wedding, I was like, let's see if we can actually be real friends because we had such a strong connection at the beginning. So far, Tisa and I have tried to move forward working on our friendship. So you telling me you're working on this friendship, mm -hmm. each other, but how is this benefiting you? Um, I feel like uh, one thing I can say is the scenes with Nancy's family, they're always kind of satisfying because everything I'm thinking they say. Now, Nancy makes a point about delivery sometimes, but the questions stand. I will never forget her brothers cornering Bartise and basically saying like, explain to us what is it that is special about her? And then saying, listen, that is a very generic answer. So I appreciate that her mom is saying, what do you gain from this friendship? Because I'm curious about the same thing. When I have clients who want to maintain a close relationship with their ex, and I'm sure, you know, they might say, not close, just friends. But even if that's the case, a lot of times what they're looking for is closure. They feel rejected or abandoned by this person and they now want to be chosen by this person. Even if it's through a platonic manner, they want to be chosen as a friend. And a lot of times there are fantasies of that friendship developing into something more, especially if that ex is to start dating someone else. There is this hope that you will have this significant space in their life where you'll be a part of their life even if they were to move forward with dating. Now that is not always the case. I am not someone who believes that you cannot have a healthy platonic relationship with an ex, but I do find it interesting in this situation especially where they had such a quick expedited process. It's not like they were friends before or that they had several years worth of developing a relationship where it's hard to envision a life without this person. So I can't help but see it as possible desperation just to feel chosen and get answers as to why things did not work out. Because if you had a four hour conversation with him, I'm curious about what it is now that's tethering you two together. The benefit is more of, <laughs> it, okay, after everything happened, after my heart was okay and I put myself out there and I started dating again, it just, there's something that's not right. And there's something that's missing. There's something that, this person is great. You have to move on, baby. Family. You have to move on, that's why. You're trying to work on this so-called friendship with him, but at the end of the day, you're not finding the right one at this point because you're still holding on to some memories that you may never even tell us. I have 
love for this person because I genuinely care about him and I don't know how to put that into words. <laughs> it's okay. You could cry. When you see this emotion from Nancy, I mean, it really does seem like she is still in love with him. And she is trying to understand why it didn't work out. That is what my assumption would be. If I was seeing a client who is talking to me about their ex the way Nancy is talking about Bartise, someone who did publicly embarrass and humiliate you. Now, I know that's the nature of the show, but that doesn't change that that is the reality of what happened. And you're trying to understand, you know, why, why did this happen? And, you know, I will even say, I do not think it's a coincidence that Nancy dyed her hair blonde. Over the course of the season, when she was comparing herself to Raven, she kept saying, you want a tall blonde. She kept saying that. Now she can't do anything about her height, but she can do something about the color of her hair. And so I don't think it's a coincidence that she decided to go blonde. I think that she's still wanting to be his choice. And if you're on other dates and you're still thinking about your ex, I can't tell you about a bigger sign that it doesn't make sense to keep this person in your life as a friend because you're already comparing people you're dating to them. So what do you benefit from maintaining a platonic relationship with them? You have to establish some distance, some time, and most importantly, some boundaries. She says, I don't know how to cut people off. Now, I'm not a huge advocate for just blocking people and having no conversation, cutting them off. I think that there is always a conversation that can be had most of the time. So you can learn, so they can learn. But once that conversation is had, you have to start forging a new path and Nancy is not leaving enough room for a new life because she's still reflecting on the past. At the time of this filming, they said it's a year after the weddings. So here we are a year later and you still are hoping that this person will choose you. Choose yourself. That's what boundaries mean. You're creating limits and standards to choose yourself. You could cry all you want. Cry it out, baby. Right, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You can cry. It's okay. A little cry. side hug, not a full hug. <laughs> yeah. You can cry. No, because... That was really significant, too. That while she was crying and being vulnerable and her brother tried to give her a hug, she's like, don't touch me. This lets you know she's in a very uncomfortable place crying in this moment. Like some defenses are coming down and she felt too open, too exposed that that physical touch would be the final straw. So he's like, okay, I'll compromise. I'll give you a side hug. Now, obviously I'm not telling people you should touch somebody when they've asked you not to touch them. We all have a right to our space and our bodies. I'm not advocating for that, but I do think that was a very interesting moment and that it seems like that was all the exposure she could take in that moment. She couldn't, in addition, have a hug, even if it was a show of support for her. He has enough friends. There's no need for you to be sacrificing yeah. your peace, your personal life. Yeah. You've tried, you gave it your all. Now let that be someone else's problem. <laughs> I just have to say, I'm just still even thinking about how Nancy is still running businesses with her ex that she had prior to Bartiz and how that was kind of bothering him. You know, she just really seems like she has a hard time moving forward and allowing others to move forward so that you don't have to keep your lives so intertwined. I just don't think that's healthy for her, especially. Again, not to say you can't have a positive relationship with your ex, but this close to the situation, I think you need a little time, then maybe I can come back together as friends. Like you have to have an opportunity to see them as something other than this person that you were in love with. But I am really pumped for tonight. I'm pumped to celebrate Alexa. Like you're gonna look good. I'm gonna look good. You're gonna look fantastic. Let me just say, I know a lot of people watch this show for the drama, but I am genuinely dreading this party I just feel like it's gonna be very unpleasant to watch and probably a lot of animosity and I'm not looking forward to it. Cheers, you guys! Cheers! We're not rushing into like having kids right now. No, no necessary plans, 
to have for what? kids. Oh, no. I know eventually. Absolutely not. We're, we're both prepared. children. I mean, if it happens, we're very prepared for it. The fuck? I want a big family, but the first step is another dog. Uh, she wants a little floof. I want a little floof. <laughs> and then we can start talking about human babies. You know what you signed up for. I mean, we talked about it in the last episode, but man, Colleen and Matt want completely different things. You know, the timing of things, what they want. It just seems like I, I can barely believe they made it a year. But somebody was saying in the last video that maybe there's a contractual obligation for the married couples to stay married up until they air, you know, after the altar or something like that. That would make sense. Cause I mean, they're not living together. And then we're talking about differences with kids and the dog. And it just seems like they are not on the same page about a lot of things. And sometimes it seems like when people ask them these questions, it's the first time they've talked about it because it wasn't like Matt goes, well, Colleen said, you know, such and such, or Colleen's like, oh, well, Matt was wanting us to do this, but I've been talking, it's like, you know, he's saying like, oh, we're not, you know, actively trying. And Colleen's like, oh, heck no. Like they're not on the same page. And it seems like they don't even talk about these things. I'm sure that they do to some capacity. I can't imagine being in a relationship where you're not, but it just seems like when they're asked these questions, it's the first time they're having a conversation about it. And it just so happens to be in front of an audience. So I hope that's not the case, but it does come across that way sometimes. Not y'all being the last people here. Bring me a gift. Uh, yeah, nice. It's in my pants. Gift of love. Oh. In a box. Wow. <laughs> it wouldn't fit in the box. <laughs> I think this vodka hey, is strong enough. What's up, Brennan? Hey. Okay. Do you want a quesadilla? No. Suddenly, I just lost my appetite. Hi. What's up? Oh. Good. How are you? There is no game plan going into this party with Cole. I will not be walking up to him, so if he expects to have conversation with me, he's going to have to over my way. Why? Like, this is the kind of stuff that is very annoying to me. You're playing games, you're being manipulative. If he wants to have a conversation, he's going to have to walk over to me. But let's play it out another way. If he doesn't come up to her at all, doesn't say hello, then what is she gonna do? She's gonna be upset, crying about saying he was mean, he didn't talk to her. Like, this is all a game and it's just very hard to watch grown people act like they're in middle school. This is very, very hard to watch. Cole's trying to be nice, he's coming in telling everybody hi, and it's just like, if you didn't want him there, if you're going to be mean to him, why invite him? Hi, Morgan. Morgan? I'm Alexa's mom. You're empty. No, you're not. There's no right. Step mom. What? Step mom. Why do you look like you're the same age as Alexa? Because we basically we are. Because she is. But you're like really beautiful, and I just thought Alexa's mom would be the same age as my mom, because I'm the same age as Alexa. You're way younger than my mom. Cole, I need you to come with me right now. Sorry. Bye. Now, Cole definitely suffers from not knowing when to edit what he's saying, because this is like the same situation like that was happening with Colleen in the pool. Like you just start talking and you don't stop talking. And now you're making people really uncomfortable. If she has told you that she's Alexa's stepmom, bare minimum, you know that she's married. So why do you feel a need to tell her that she's beautiful? You know, these are the kind of things that I can definitely understand why being with Cole made Zay feel more insecure. I just don't think it's fair to say that Cole completely shattered confidence that I'm not sure was there in the first place. But trust me, you guys, I see, I know Cole makes a lot of immature choices, especially when it comes to talking to women. He's just... It's not that he's trying to be with her, but you've got to edit what you say. It's going to come off a certain way, you know? I'm trying to connect Cole and Brennan because I want them to squash whatever the hell they have going on. Things weren't handled appropriately. For sure, because okay. your wife is so, friends with Zay and you deserve to have... That doesn't that doesn't matter. But that, okay, that, what, what I'm referring to is you telling Zay that she's either too fat or she, she eats too much or she's not your type or you and hitting on other people at different bars. That's what I'm referring to. Brennan has a bone to pick with me because of Alexa. I didn't do anything to Brennan. I didn't flirt with any girls. He's just pissed off at me because I hurt his- This is also where we have to talk about how people have different definitions of what counts as flirting. Because I could see it as Cole was just flirting with Alexa's stepmom. Based on him saying, you're beautiful, you look too young to be her mom. 
those things could be interpreted as flirting. Now, other people might say that's not flirting. What's wrong with giving her a compliment or being honest? So that's another thing when I'm talking or working with couples, especially when we start talking about what constitutes cheating, you need to have a clear understanding of what constitutes flirting and if flirting constitutes cheating for you. Because I would say that if you haven't been flirting with other girls, but you wouldn't consider what you were just doing with Alexa's stepmom as flirting, then it might just be that the people around you don't agree that that's not what flirting looks like. I feel bad for all the single people. Everybody that's single, just like go on Love is Blind. Yeah. You know? Or yeah. like create a Love is Blind in your city and just talk to people through a wall. Now you know good and well, most of these people that have been on Love is Blind did not come out on the other end of it. And some things are yet to be seen. Why would he say that? Uh, that is the most ridiculous advice. <laughs> okay. You need to tell me right now, you decide right now, what do you want us to be going forward? Are we gonna be friends or no? No. Does it make sense? I care about Nancy, and I know that I always care about Nancy because of this experiment, what we went through. It makes sense to want her in my life, but it's you know easier said than done. <laughs> and this is the thing, you guys, just because you care about a person does not mean they need to have an active role in your life. There can be people that are abusing you, who are causing you trauma that you genuinely care about. You care about their well being, but it's safer and smarter for you not to be in a relationship with them. I'm not saying that's what's happening with Nancy and Bartise. I'm just saying that that's an extreme example of a time where you might care about somebody and it's still in your best interest to keep some distance from them. So I do think they made the right choice. Now the question is, will they stick to it? Because it does seem like Nancy is making this choice because she doesn't want to let everyone down. It's like, at first I didn't want to let Bartise down, but now I don't want to let down my mom, brother, my friends. I don't want to let them down, so then I have to stop being friends with Bartise. But I wonder how long she'll be able to hold on to that. But like I said, it's not that I think that you can't be in each other's lives ever. But I definitely think when you're in the process of healing those relational wounds, it doesn't make sense to give a person or give a situation the opportunity to add to those wounds while you're trying to heal. Hi, Zay. Hi. I wanted to come break the ice and just say, hey. Hi. Um, do you want to talk? All right, and that is the end of episode two and also almost the end of my camera battery. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you guys if you've been watching the premiere with me live. I love, love, love chatting with you. I will be doing the last episode of After the Altar and be sure to let me know any other shows that you would like me to review or movies. Please remember to like this video if you found it interesting, share it with anyone that you think might also enjoy it and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Again, I thank you for watching all the way until the end. You didn't have to, but it helps me so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. What?